This video is about the ADA LM2000, also known as the M2K. It's a compact USB connected device that provides nine electronics lab instruments. Its purpose is electronics experimentation and education with a focus on working with breadboard circuits, although you could also do other things. I bought one for $237 US from mouser.com, and I think it's a very interesting device and a good value based on its wide variety of capabilities. There's a YouTube channel, Circuits from the Lab, that provides installation and introductory material that I won't try to duplicate. There are also wiki pages that provide a wide variety of suggestions for interesting lab projects, ranging from simple to advanced. So, the bottom line is that it's a physically small device that provides nine lab instruments, but it compromises so that it does not really completely replace dedicated lab equipment, but it can get an electronics hobbyist or student a, lo a long way, so I think it's a very interesting device to, to dive into. The M2K is based on signal capture and generation hardware operating at up to 100 million samples per second. The maximum recommended analog input voltages are ranging from minus 20 volts to 20 volts. The analog output voltage levels range from minus 5 to 5 volts. The digital pin signal levels are 3.3 volts, but 5 volt tolerate, uh, but can tolerate 5 volts, and 1.8 volt signaling inputs should be usable. The claimed instrument bandwidth ranges from 30 to 50 megahertz, but when working with breadboards and flying leads, I think working with signals with max frequencies of 5 to 10 megahertz is often the practical limit, but the instrument does allow you to push higher. The instruments are provided by software called Scopy. This software runs on Windows, Linux, or Macintosh, and we can take a look at it to, to see what the instruments are. So first, there's an, an oscilloscope. This is a two-channel oscilloscope, and the minimum horizontal time base is about 100 nanoseconds. So you can get a good look at signals in the 5 megahertz or maybe a little bit higher range. The next instrument is a spectrum analyzer, and this has a maximum span of 50 megahertz, but po possibly less, less in practice. And then the third instrument is a, a network analyzer with a max span of 25 megahertz. The next instrument is an analog signal generator, an arbitrary waveform generator that is really very flexible. Um, it's, it supports up to 30 megahertz in theory. The maximum amplitudes are five volt, plus or minus five volts, but it has full offset control. As I say, it's a very flexible uh, waveform gem generation tool, very featureful. The next tool uses the digital I.O. pins, um, ba basically very fast uh, GPIOs, and it's a logic analyzer um, capable of decoding protocols such as I2C, and there are a total of 16 of these fast sampling GPIO digital pins. The next instrument is a pattern generator um, capable of generating output uh, digital waveforms on the digital pins. For example, a square wave with 50% duty cycle at up to 50 megahertz. But in practice, you'll probably want to use it slower. The next tool is a is just a simple digital I/O sort of GUI that lets you set set values for or sample the digital I/O pins, the 16 digital I/O pins. And the uh, penultimate instrument is a, a voltmeter. This is using the same sampling. Um, inputs used by the oscilloscope and the spectrum analyzer. And, um, well, um, well, it's a voltmeter. It's not really a replacement for owning a, a voltmeter, though. And then the last instrument is a, is a dual uh, power supply, um, providing a positive power, power supply with up to 5 volts and a negative power supply with up to minus 5 volts. The key thing to know about this is that it is limited to about a 50 milliamp output. This is enough for experimenting with uh, circuits with transistors, passive devices, and some op amps. But you know you, there are many circumstances where you would wish for a stronger power supply. So how do you connect the M2K to your projects? It comes with these flying leads, um, which end in uh, female connectors that you can attach to pin headers. It also comes with an, an assortment of uh, double height um, 
you know mail head mail pins so you can take the mail pin and put it into the flying lead from the m2k and then just insert that into a breadboard and that's how you hook up the signals let's look at the signals on the m2k that are available to connect to the circuit that we're going to test these, these signals are, are on header pins on the side of the M2K and essentially flying wire leads attached via the connector that you can see at the bottom. The analog signals are on the left and the um, digital signals are on the right. So starting from the left, the one plus and the one minus are the differential analog input for channel one of the oscilloscope or, or the spectrum analyzer. Two plus and two minus are the differential inputs for channel two. Then we have two ground, ground pins. V plus and V minus are the power supply pins. And W1 and W2 are the, are the, the signal generator waveform channel outputs. And then there's some more grounds and TI and TO are associated with the external triggers that we won't talk about. And then the rest of the pins are the digital GPIO pins. So now that we see that, why don't we look at making the, L2, the M2K do something? The circuit we're testing is a Sal and Key low pass filter. And I'm showing the schematic here using LT Spice. The, on, the, on the breadboard, I'm using an NE5532 uh, op amp because I don't actually have an 8032, and that's what I happen to have in this LT Spice simulation. I guess we can run this real quick and see what LT Spice thinks the, uh, the output characteristics will be like. So if I click on out here, then we see the, the attenuation of the input signal. This is the output signal. And so at 100 kilohertz, the attenuation is about 30 dB down, roughly, a little, little more, I guess. And that's what LT Spice thinks. Let's see what the actual circuit does. First, we connect the M2K by clicking on its icon in Scopey. Click Connect, and it'll say Connected, and Calibrating. And finally, it's calibrated, so we can proceed to connect the wires to our circuit. So let's connect the M2K to the circuit under test. Um, first, we'll connect a bunch of things to ground, an actual ground wire. And then the V minus input from the first channel. The V minus input of the second channel, the blue white. And then we'll connect the uh, negative supply. We'll use the power supply of the M2K. That's the negative supply to the op amp. And the positive would be the red. Connect the positive supply. And then we'll use um, the, the waveform generator as the input. And so this goes to the input of the op amp. And we'll monitor that using the first channel of the oscilloscope. And then finally, the second channel of the oscilloscope will be connected to the output, like so. Now that the circuit is connected to the Scopey, let's configure Scopey and see what the circuit do can, can do. So first of all, the power supply, uh, we want it to be tracking because we want plus and minus five volts on both. So that should do that. Both of them are set to be enabled. Um, the signal generator, let's just start with a simple test at one volt. And um, let's just say one kilohertz. That should be OK. Only the first channel is activated. And the oscilloscope will use both channels. And we might as well um, adjust them once we're going. But I'll set the zero for the vertical for channel one and uh, channel two. Two volts per division is certainly going to be too much. So now let's uh, activate the power supply, activate the signal generator, and run the oscilloscope. And move the trigger point, and we see signals. So let's change the time base so we can see them a little bit better. And there we are. 
And I suppose we could uh, look at them a little bit more zoomed in vertically. So that's the output. And this is the input. And we're operating at that low frequency from the signal generator, just one, one kilohertz. So we expect the output to be pretty much equal to the, to the input. So next, let's use the network analyzer to see what the frequency response of this circuit is. So we'll go to the network an analyzer and make some changes. Well, our amplitude is set to one volt, that's good. And the start can be, say, one kilohertz. The stop can be 100 kilohertz. All right, I didn't get one kilohertz there. One kilohertz to 100 kilohertz. That looks fine. Logarithmic. And I think all of these other defaults are OK uh, to start with. So let's do a single capture. And so it's starting to capture. And we see that it's you know, showing 0 dB uh, loss so far at low frequencies, as makes sense. So this will take a while. It's been a minute or two, and uh, the sweep is progressing. We can see that as the frequency is increasing, the amplitude of the output is decreasing, just like we'd expect for a low-pass filter. It's also the case that the phase of the output signal is changed with respect to the, to the input signal. And the higher the frequency goes, the more attenuation in the output we should see. And so it's nearly reached the 100 kilohertz endpoint that we specified. And now the sweep is done, and we can see that the, uh, the 100, 100 kilohertz attenuation is about 30 decibels. We can use the, the display controls to zoom in a little bit, like our minimum doesn't need to be minus 80 dB. We could change that to minus 50, and maybe the maximum could be changed to 5. So that, that zooms the display a little bit. It's also possible to zoom like so and uh, get a better view of the last part. And if you right click, it goes back. So there's our frequency response from 1 kilohertz to 100 kilohertz. I'll end the video here. We've had an introduction to the ATALM2000, also known as the M2K, and seen an example of what it can do. We analyzed the frequency response of a low-pass filter. I think this device, the M2K, is very interesting and useful for exploring electronics, so I'm thinking I'll make a couple, of, a couple more videos about it, uh, perhaps starting with a video showing what higher speed signals look like, and then maybe a few more showing some of the more interesting capabilities of the device. I hope you found this interesting. Thank you very much.